Tolkien was fascinated by dragons from the earliest age. He was obviously completely steeped in the heroic tales about dragons and mythical creatures, to the extent that he actually tried to write his own dragon story at the age of seven. Tolkien loved dragons all his life, and he starts writing about Middle Earth, though he doesn't use that name, in about 1914, 1915. And his early writings are full of dragons. He thought dragons were the greatest foe a hero could face. I can understand why he was so completely fascinated by them. They are creatures of immense power and cunning, as well as occupying both the air and the land. I think there's not one culture in the world that doesn't have some form of dragons. Dragons had been pervasive throughout ancient mythology as far back as any writings go. I think the oldest mention we have of dragons would be from Babylon, when the universe was formed by slaying a dragon, so that we're talking five millennia before our period. The classical legends are full of stories with dragons and great serpents. The medieval literature, full of stories about dragons, and Tolkien was very familiar with them. But at some point, people stopped taking dragons seriously. Basically, dragons went out of style with the Renaissance. At that time, we're getting into a very different world of more human foes. Shakespeare's heroes don't fight dragons, they fight each other, and dragons pretty much disappear out of mainstream literature. Dragons return to the stage in the mid-1800s. But all of these dragons were quaint, adorable, quirky, like um, the reluctant dragon who didn't want to fight the knight. And Tolkien didn't like that. He wanted it to be more of the ancient dragons, an intelligent creature with its own goals and its own aims and its own nature. He wanted to show that dragons were terrifying, powerful, fierce. So for them to actually arrive in modern literature meant reaching back a millennia before that, back into the Dark Ages, basically, which is what Tolkien did. Smaug is a direct descendant of two notable dragons from mythology, starting with the unnamed dragon from the saga of Beowulf. Beowulf was written down between the 8th and the 11th century, but it was in existence for a great deal longer than that in oral form. So it really is the first piece of actual English literature. The Beowulf dragon is much more of a dangerous beast. There's no talking to it. There's no negotiating with it. It's just a pure force of violence. And what stirs it up is someone discovers the dragon is sitting on a pile of gold, a hoard of treasure. So we have a horde's worm asleep on a pile of treasure until he's aroused by a thief. Sound familiar? The golden cup is taken, and that is what wakes the dragon and rouses it to fury. And comes forth in a storm of flame and fire, destroys villages. Tolkien would certainly have been drawing on those influences from the Beowulf dragon. But his dragon, his Smaug, is much more like uh, Fafnir from the Volsunga saga of Icelandic literature, which he loved so much. Fafnir, in particular, is a talking dragon, the dragon which the hero Sigurd kills, which is an event commemorated in stone inscriptions all over Western Europe. Fafnir did not start out as a dragon. Originally, he was a man, and he quarreled with his brothers over his father's inheritance and killed one and drove the other off so that he could guard the gold. And the greed for that treasure eventually twisted his spine and elongated his jaw and transformed him into a dragon. And he spent his days asleep on this hoard in a cave until he was confronted by the young hero Sigurd who lay in wait for him. One of the things that Tolkien drew from the tale of Fafnir the dragon there was the power of language is also harnessed by dragons. Fafnir is hugely intelligent and cunning and therefore able to use words as weapons. One of the great scenes is the conversation between Sigurd, who has stabbed the dragon from below, and Fafnir, who is dying. Talking to a dragon is dangerous. And Sigurd knows that. Fafnir asks Sigurd who he is. Svein, Oxvein, Verium Erdu, Svein, Umborin, 
Era Erto Maramur. And of course, Sagar doesn't tell him. Which is smart. The traditional story is you don't tell a dragon your name. Because if you can use somebody's true name, you can enslave them to you. Tolkien obviously remembered much of that in the conversation between Smaug and Bilbo, because Bilbo also won't tell his name. Who are you? And where do you come from, may I ask? But Bilbo finds it very hard to resist the dragon, and he says more than he should have. Barrel Rider. Barrel. Now that is interesting. But then, as Tolkien rightly says, Smaug had rather an overwhelming personality. The dragon's power of speech is the power of seduction, of guile, of sowing doubt. The coward, how confused, has weighed the value of your life and found it worth nothing. No. No, you're lying. It's a very, very strong, strong theme. Tolkien has taken the best parts of these ancient dragons and put them into Smaug. Professor Tolkien had enormous respect for the mythology of dragons and where they came from and wanted them to be not just beasts or magical creatures, but beings, powerful beings, forces, in fact. So, in a sense, Smaug is both the first dragon of modern fantasy and the last mythological dragon, if you like.